Hi everyone and welcome to Learn A-Level Biology for Free with Miss Estrick. In today's session we'll be looking at two types of transport across a membrane, active transport and co-transport. So if you aren't already subscribed, click below to subscribe and if you do like this video today then give it a thumbs up. Get yourself some pen and paper if you want to make notes as you go, pause it, rewind, go at your own pace. So we're going to start with a recap from some of the knowledge that you might have from GCSE, but also earlier on within this topic at A-level. So we've got three diagrams here looking at transport across membranes. First thing is, nice and easy to get into it, spotting the difference between the diagrams. And then using that knowledge to come up with what types of transport each of these three are. So the key differences are, they are all across a membrane, but the first one, it's going down its concentration gradient without a protein. Second, it's still going, the molecules are moving down their concentration gradient, but this time it's through a protein. And lastly, the molecules are going against the concentration gradient through a protein, but also with energy in the form of ATP. So naming them, so the first one is simple diffusion, second facilitated diffusion, and lastly active transport. And that's the one that we're going to be focusing on today. So active transport then, at GCSE you learn that it's the movement of substances from an area of low concentration to an area of higher concentration. And that has to go through a carrier protein. And because it's going up against its concentration gradient, it requires energy, and that's in the form of ATP. Now, a bit more detail at A-level. Um, starting off, we have a look at this diagram. We've got our transport proteins, but they're always going to be carrier proteins. And these are the ones where they will attach one side and then they're carried through to the other. And those proteins span across the width of the membrane. The sodium ions, which is the example that we're using in this case, are going to attach to that carrier protein because the shape of the sodium ions is complementary to a receptor site on the carrier protein. So molecules that are complementary to the receptor site are the only molecules that can attach to this particular carrier protein. But Within a membrane, there'll be lots of different carrier proteins for different molecules to be able to attach to. So that's what's happening in step two here. Step three, the ATP within your cell will attach to the carrier protein. And immediately after attaching, it's hydrolyzed into ADP, so adenosine diphosphate, and the third phosphate remains attached to that carrier protein. And because that phosphate group is attached, it causes the carrier protein to slightly change shape. So it's altering its unique 3D tertiary structure. A bit of a recap on protein structures, just click up here if you need to see the protein structure video. But as that carrier protein changes shape, it causes the release of the sodium ions to the other side of the cell. The last thing is the phosphate ion will be released and when it does get released, the carrier protein is restored to its original shape. So that is the extra details about active transport. So you can actually see how the carrier protein is involved, the slight changes in its tertiary structure based on the binding of different molecules and how the ATP is literally used. So it's that hydrolysis of ATP to enable the phosphate group to attach to the carrier protein to cause the change which releases the sodium ions. So our example of active transport that we're going to focus on is co-transport. And the example on the AQA specification that you need to know is co-transport of glucose, or it's the same for amino acids as well, um, co-transport of glucose with sodium ions in the ileum, so within the small intestines, looking at how glucose is absorbed into the blood. So the reason then that active transport or this co-transport is required for this step is the concentration of sodium ions within the epithelial cell, and this is the layer of cells that are lining the walls of the small intestine, so the ileum. 
that those epithelial cells usually have a really, really high concentration of glucose. So that means as the digested food is flowing through the lumen of your small intestines or the ileum, you do not have that um, high to low concentration gradient to enable facilitated diffusion. So instead, the absorption of glucose has to be through active transport to enable it to get glucose to go against its concentration gradient. And the type of active transport is co-transport. So let's have a look at each step in this process. So step one, we're actually going to start at this point in the diagram. And just to go back one, just to show you, we're looking at the blue section is representing the lumen of the ileum. So that's like the inside of the tube, which is your small intestines. Then we're looking at the epithelial cell. So these are the layers of cells that line the walls of the um, intestines. And then we've got the capillary, which lies right next to the epithelial cells and the blood within it. So step one we said we'd look at is just here. And we have a carrier protein which is enabling sodium ions, which is the dark blue, to be actively transported from the epithelial cell into the blood within the capillary. Now this is actually also co-transport because as that happens, a potassium ion is transported from the blood into the epithelial cell. But actually that extra detail isn't focused on within the specification that you need to know. So the first step is sodium ions from the epithelial cell are actively transported into the blood. And this stage is exactly what we just looked at in terms of active transport. The ATP attaches, hydrolyzes, and that enables the sodium ions to move from the cell into the blood. The reason that part has to happen is we now have a much lower sodium ion concentration within the epithelial cell compared to the lumen of the ileum. And that means the sodium ions within the digested food in the lumen of the ileum can move by facilitated diffusion into the cell down their concentration gradient. So that will then happen. The protein that the sodium ions diffuse through is actually a co-transporter protein. And what that means is two different molecules attach before either of them are transported to the other side. So the sodium ions will attach to their complementary shape receptor. That then enables glucose molecules to attach. Once the glucose attaches, that means the sodium can be released on the other side, and that then enables the glucose to be released on the other side. So they are transported together, which is why it's co-transport. So now within the epithelial cell, we'll get a buildup of glucose. And this co-transport enabled glucose to be moved from the lumen against its concentration gradient into the epithelial cells. So that high concentration of glucose within the epithelial cell enables the glucose to move down its concentration gradient from the epithelial cell into the blood in the capillary. And that's by facilitated diffusion. So a couple of extra points. The first one is the reason blood doesn't have um, this buildup of glucose molecules as they're being absorbed. And that's because within the capillary, the blood is constantly flowing. So as soon as this glucose molecule is absorbed into the blood, the blood's flowing and carries it away. So this flowing blood is what maintains the concentration gradient of glucose between the epithelial cell and the capillary. Second thing just to point out is on this epithelial cell, these yellow lumps here are actually meant to be microvilli. And that is to increase the surface area of this epithelial cell. And although I've only shown one of these co-transporter proteins for sodium and glucose, you'd actually have lots of these co-transporter proteins within the membrane of this epithelial cell. And the more of these co-transporter proteins you have, the more sodium and glucose can be absorbed. So by having these microvilli, you get this highly folded membrane, and therefore lots of co-transporter proteins are embedded within the membrane, and that gives the maximum absorption of glucose. So that's it for co-transport and active transport. So just in summary, 
First of all, both active transport and co-transport are ways to move molecules across a membrane. Co-transport is a type of active transport, so it will always involve ATP. We went through active transports. We said it's always through a carrier protein, and it's possible because ATP is hydrolyzed to ADP and PI. And it's that attachment of the PI, which is inorganic phosphate, which causes the carrier protein to change shape and release molecules to the other side of the cell membrane. Lastly then, co-transport is how glucose, but also amino acids, are absorbed from the lumen of the ileum into the epithelial cells of the ileum and then finally into the bloodstream. So that's it for active transport and co-transport. Head over to missestrick.com for practice questions. And if you have liked today's video, make sure you give it a thumbs up below.